Any day you have the keys to a car like this is a good day because a car like this has one big goal in mind, being one of the best driver's cars available. This is the all new BMW M2 CS and it is a top tier, most hardcore version of the BMW 2 Series. M cars in recent times and generations, just like most sports cars, have really grown in size and weight, and things like the M3 and M5 are heavier and bigger than ever before. But when they came out with the M2, it felt like a revitalization of the M3 from the E90 generation and the E46 generation, a smaller package, lighter, more driver focused. And when I drove the M2 and M2 competition, I know I liked them a good amount, but this M2 CS has the rare opportunity of being one of the cars that seems to be universally loved. I mean, there are cars like, uh, I mean, Ferrari Pista, Porsche GT3s, McLarens, that everybody likes a lot because they're very, very expensive. But a car like the M2 CS has almost universally been met with extreme amounts of praise. So when I found out that my good friend Jason decided to trade in his M3 CS, the outgoing one, for an M2 CS, I was absolutely intrigued. And today, we're gonna find out what it's like. The powertrain in the M2 CS pulls from the outgoing M3 and M4 competition. So it's a three liter twin turbo inline six, the S55 motor. In this car, it makes the 444 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. You can get either a seven speed dual clutch transmission or manual is still available. You can get a six speed manual on the M2 CS. This one here is equipped with the seven speed DCT. It's rear wheel drive only and features a lot of carbon fiber that bring the curb weight down. But overall, this powertrain is taking the M3, M4 competition and putting into a smaller package, which is definitely a good thing. Zero to 60 is a little bit quicker than the M2 comp. It's rated at four seconds flat from the manual and 3.8 for this DCT. In terms of exterior styling, the CS version is always the most aggressive. It adds on, and the M2 CS is the same way. Up front, we've got this extra carbon fiber splitter here. All the carbon fiber on this car is standard. This entire hood is carbon fiber too, about half the weight of the steel hood in a regular M2. And because this is a carbon fiber hood, it's obviously very light, but you have to be very careful with flexing it. So this is how you have to shut the hood on the M2 CS, just like the full carbon hood on the M3 CS. You line it up like this, and then you have to slam it so both latches connect at the same time. It's kind of scary, but that's how you close the hood on an M2 CS. To lower the center of gravity, we have a full carbon fiber roof. It's exposed weave. We have carbon fiber mirrors. We've got the rear lip and then also a little wing back there and the rear diffuser. Underneath that diffuser, something very important has to be done. You must black out the giant muffler underneath the M2 CS because when it's silver, it's very apparent and it does not look good. So luckily, this one has it already blacked out, hides it a bit better. Overall, I love the proportions of the M2 in general, and I think the CS version just takes it up, and it just looks so good and aggressive from every single angle, especially given the new M3s and M4s that have, how do we put this, larger than average size front kidney grills. I think this is one of the best looking BMW M cars that's come out in a while, and may be one of the best looking ones going forward too. With that, we'll hop inside, we'll talk about the interior, what it's like to drive, and the value. Well, that is properly quick. All right. On the inside of the M2 CS, it's very, very, very familiar, uh, almost in a dated way. So this interior kind of tech layout, everything would have debuted on the F80 generation of the M3, which I think that was back in like 2014, 2015. So we're, we're quite a bit forward. So in comparison to some of the newer stuff, we don't have a full digital display screen here. The, the center infotainment iDrive screen is looking a little bit smaller. We do have standard Apple CarPlay now on this M2 CS. So that is a nice convenience feature. <laughs> Oh, tail end's a little wiggly right now. Gotta get, gotta get some warmth into those tires. Um, but on the inside, I, I still like that it has uh, analog tachometer, that type of thing. That's a cool touch. Um, you can't go wrong with that. But compared to some of the newer virtual cockpit stuff, it doesn't feel quite as cutting edge. But in a car like the M2 CS, something you can still get it with a manual transmission is just about the driving focus. I don't mind it. It's not a complaint to me. Something that is strange to me is this car has a lot of weight saving measures. It's very focused on the driver engagement, right? So the carbon fiber hood, the roof, things like that. It doesn't even have like a center console 
thing right here, all, all in the name of saving weight, but we have leather covered heated seats. Those aren't light. They're very comfortable seats. And if it is cold out, would I like heated seats? Absolutely. But it just seems to kind of like confuse itself with the whole weight savings CS mantra. Um, so that's kind of weird to me, but we've got this large Alcantara steering wheel, some perforations there. The perforations are echoed across on the seats too. And then we also have the CS perforation on the dash. A lot of Alcantara covering this entire kind of center console. It's like Alcantara and carbon fiber. Some M stitching on the seat belts too, on the seats. So we got a lot of things. I think these seats are, might be the same in, as in the competition, uh, M3 competition, M3 and M4 comp. Same with the steering wheel. Spent a lot of time in an F80 M3 competition. Really like that a lot, actually. Um, oh, that's a KA band. Uh, my friend John's car, you guys remember seeing some videos on that white car. It was great, but this M2CS is definitely better. So wrapping up the inside stuff, that's pretty much all we, I think we need to talk about per se. Um, nice red stitching, but again, nothing groundbreaking in here. Very similar to the, the M2 competition and the M3 CS for sure that we spent some time in. Obviously we only have two seats back there. So it is a four seater, two door for the M2 CS. Now in terms of driving, that's where I'm really, really excited. So I've spent about an hour in this car coming out here. Um, I've heard so many good things about this car. Like universally, everybody's loving it, calling it one of the best M cars ever made, comparing it to things like uh, Cayman GT4, 718 GT4. And on paper, the recipe looks very good. We finally have adaptive dampers from the M3 and M4 outgoing generation. So anywhere between comfort to sport and sport plus. So that's definitely a good thing to see. We have the powertrain, the S55 engine, makes good power in this car. Peak torque of 406 pound feet at 2,000. 350 RPM, so that's very low in the rev range. You get that peak torque on hand. Rear wheel drive only, you can get Cup 2 tires on it. This is just on the regular PS4S, and as I mentioned, steel brakes on this, you can option up to carbon ceramics, which are $8,500. But it's really checking all the boxes of being the driver's car. Whoa. So the seven speed dual clutch in this car feels very similar to the one that's in the M3 and M4. It might actually be the final of the dual clutches we get in the M car. It seems like a lot of them are going to the ZF eight speed, a torque converter based automatic transmission. Luckily you can still get a manual transmission in the M2 CS and that would definitely be a lot of fun. BMW manual transmissions aren't my favorite in terms of fuel, but just the fact you can option it with three pedals is a great thing. This one here was optioned with the DCT. The owner uh, plans on tracking a lot as more wants the, the, the top track times you can possibly get with the car. Either way, I think it's great. Um, the other thing is Peak torque I mentioned is low down, weight is also lower, but just under 3,500 pounds for this. So it's a bit lighter than the M2 competition, but we have all these ingredients that add up and there are a lot of cars that on paper look like they'd be great to drive, but then you experience them, they're just like almost there, not quite there. This M2 CS, I'm happy to say so far, it feels like probably one of the best M cars I've driven. My top three would likely be the E92, like an LCI E92 M3, and I also really liked the E39 M5, but this car. <laughs> oh, it is, it's really fast. It is quite fast. And earlier on, I took it a couple around some turns and things like that, and the steering is nice and direct, communicative. It does everything really well. In terms of value, the M2 CS is fairly expensive, starting at just under $85,000. And for something that has the two in the name, the two series family, to a lot of people that might seem like a lot of money. And I mean, looking at previous generations of like M3s and stuff, that's, that's a lot of money. They've gotten more and more expensive. Now, you can make it even more expensive. Carbon ceramic brakes, like I mentioned, $8,500. There aren't a ton of options on this car. A lot of them are usually standard, but you can get it close. You can get into the 90s without, without a problem. And um, we're talking nearly $100,000 for an M2, essentially. Do I think it's worth it? I, I gotta say yes. I mean, it, it. having driven the M3 CS, and I liked it a lot. I really, really liked the M3 CS. I thought it was the best in that lineup. 
but I couldn't justify the price delta over the M3 competition because I really like the M3 competition. I didn't like the M2 comp as much. It felt a little stiff and bouncy, and I didn't love that car, but this one I like. I just, I really, really am a big fan of that, and I think I would justify that money. This might be the M car that I would buy if I had to buy one right now. Now, the rarity is also a good thing for CS and the value, right? Uh, this was only built for the 2020 model year, and uh, 2,200 total were built worldwide, with allegedly originally 500 coming to America, but then it got kind of uncertain, so probably somewhere in that range, maybe a few more coming to America, but that's, in the scheme of sports cars, that's a pretty rare vehicle overall. Will it in, like hold value and shoot up like crazy? I don't think that. I wouldn't really view this as like an investment car per se, um, but as something that has some rarity and will hold value and offers you that driving experience, two thumbs up from me. So final thoughts on the M2CS. I, I think it's a great combination of a lot of things. They, they executed it well. It is a great driver's car for sure. It feels just exciting and fun, I mean. And it's definitely smaller than the M3 CS, which... <laughs> I just got wheel spin shifting in the second, I think. <laughs> uh, it definitely feels more compact and nimble than the M3 CS, uh, just as fast. Honestly, just as fast. It puts the power down pretty well once the tires are warmed up. I am looking forward to getting behind the wheel of this car again. We'll talk with Jason a bit about it. They did a good job with this car. Last of the great M's and possibly the best M driver's car ever. Maybe, maybe it could be the pinnacle. We'll see where they go. Make sure you guys check out the ownership video too. Thanks for watching.